Rachel, you mentioned that some years ago, uh, I think it was in 2010, I did serve as a member of the Rivlin Dominici Debt Reduction Task Force, which was uh, sponsored by the Bipartisan Policy Center. And it was meeting at the same time as the Simpson Bowles Commission. In fact, Alice Rivlin was the, the one person who was a member of both. Um, we came to very similar type conclusions. And, you know, as you look at a, a new possible fiscal commission, uh, there are some lessons that I learned from serving on that. And one is, uh, you know, certainly that everything needs to be on the table because you're not going to get you're not going to get Democrats agreeing to things that that Republicans want without getting some things from the Republicans that Democrats want. It, it, it sounds simple, but it, it just needs to be reiterated when we start talking about a commission in this because things are much more partisan mm -hmm. than they were in 2010. And they seem pretty, pretty partisan to me in those days, uh, you know, but anyway, this, this so, so everything needs to be on the table from that sense, but everything also needs to be on the table. And by that, I mean, all parts of the budget just from a substantive point of view, because the gap that needs to be closed is is much bigger because exactly. we've done nothing. <laughs> and, you know, that's that's one of the problems. Sometimes people say, well, you know, maybe we've done nothing, but nothing bad has happened. Well, mm -hmm. what bad has happened is that we've dug ourselves a much bigger hole uh, that becomes much more difficult to fix, even if you know, forget about balancing the budget. That's that's long gone as a as a achievable goal anytime in the near future. But just trying to stabilize the debt is very difficult. And so if you start taking things off the table, like Social Security and Medicare and defense and veterans, it becomes, uh, you know, you just have to you have to cut so much of everything else that it's just an absurdity. And then if you take revenue off the table, well, forget it. I mean, you can you know, you're practically eliminating the rest of the budget. So I think that you but, but the lesson I learned is that people in the Rivlin Dimenci Commission were able to make those compromises mm -hmm. and working together. Uh, and I would f finally just. Uh, you know, reiterate one other point that you made, which is that public education is important for a for a commission. Um, we did a fiscal wake up tour uh, <laughs> for, for several years. And, you know, people from the Bipartisan Policy Center were guests on that from time to time. And uh, I, I think people really like the idea of hearing from credible analysts on either side of the partisan divide or ideological divide that can agree on the facts, even yep. if they don't agree on the solutions. And so anyway, I think that that's, that's an important thing for the commission is at least agreeing on a set of facts, explaining those to the public, and then having a debate about, you know, an honest dialogue about what are the options and, you know, what trade-offs and, and compromises need to be met? I, I could not agree more. I mean, I think just that, that how, you've, how you've defined it so, so well, just agreeing on the facts. I mean, I think that we have in the past decade as kind of the political polarization has just intensified. Um, and we've seen the economic and the fiscal trajectory of our nation change so much, but we've also enjoyed you know, a relatively low cost of borrowing over the past over the past 15 years, which has likely in many ways dampened the impacts of our rising debt, right? And but now we are facing higher interest rates. We face persistent inflation over the past few years. Um, and given how much higher our federal debt is, I think that there really is a concern now that we could see consequences both at the macroeconomic level and the household level materialize um, very quickly. 